Well, it's the next morning. Let's see what we've got here. Well, shit. That's disappointing. <laughs> we uh, see the charger was on for a little over 12 hours. Maintaining 12.8 volts. But we have no current. That means it actually went to sleep on me last night. Let's uh, turn the amp clamp on again and see uh, if it's going to say anything. Let's see. Uh, zeroed out. Um, 50, 60 milliamps, which is a little high, but this could just be off a little bit. Cause like right there it says 15. When you're dealing with amps that low, an amp clamp's really not a good method, but it went to sleep on me. I kinda I really think my initial testing getting to that RF hub, I I think that's the culprit whether or not is an input doing it i don't know um i know it's got several wires going to it but it just kind of seems strange that once i actually took power away from it and plugged it back up that it stopped talking gibberish except for when we've seen that live data about the uh, shifter position. I, I need to look up a diagram and see what that's all about. I, I have no idea where it gets that data from. I don't know if it's like over the CAN bus or if it's actually seeing the part switch, position switch. I don't know. So let me do a little research on that little thing. But I, I think I'm calling an RF hub in this thing. So I found the diagram. This is in the, the transmission diagram, the OE diagram. The radio frequency hub does have a uh, transmission range sensor park sen signal wire that comes from the TCM. I don't know if this is like just a data line or if there's like dedicated voltages per the position. So we're going to scope this and see what this wire actually does. I got my scope lead just back probed in here is pin 2 on the RF hub and we are going to make use of one of the features of the Ultra the uh, split screen so let's go back over here we need to go into diagnostics so a little trick with this if you use this and you think it boots very slow like it takes a long time to connect well it's just really that the vci takes a while to turn on but this thing is uh got an internal battery to it so if you just take and turn the power on with the uh, button you just hold the button for a couple seconds and it'll turn on let this thing boot and connect so like basically you're walking out to a car you know just turn it on or if you use it a lot just leave it on but once it's connected to this it actually connects to a car really fast so let's turn the key on oh, I gotta get the key hmm. can't turn the key on without the key so let's Turn the key on here, okay. Now watch how fast this actually will auto populate the VIN. Like it connects, turns on, oops. It connects and brings up the VIN. So let me get my cable here. All right, so cable, if I can just feel around under here. Let me, still can't get it. There it goes. Nope, I didn't. Uh, there we go. 
Look at that. That fast. That's nice. But you gotta have that on. If that's not on, it, it does take a while for it to uh, populate. So we're gonna connect to this. Um, we're just gonna go into the RF hub. And live data. Where was that? Um, seems like it was way down here. Looking for that part range switch. Peer. There we go. Let's move that to the top. See, we're it's still showing that we're in R. So let's split screen this. We're going to go to scope. Let it get connected to the scope. And we're going to go that's on millivolts right now. Let's change this to 20 volts because I, I have no idea what this signal is going to do. But right now we're at zero. Um, let's go let's go out to like 500 milliseconds just to see what this does. But we're at zero right now. All right, so here we go. Let's put this thing. I got to crank this because... You know, like the shifter doesn't let me just move it. So we gotta crank it. And we'll go reverse. So that's 12 volts. Neutral. Drive. So this looks like this is just a park switch. That is not what that is. This is just a park switch. So out of park, we, we go high. Like we're in drive right now. We're still high. We're in neutral. We're still high. It only goes low when it's in park. So I still don't know where this is coming from. So further down in the data, I found this gated park switch. And right now, we're in park. So we're pulled low. This is what's actually this TRS park sensor. Because if I go out of park, there we go. So this thing open circuit, I'm guessing this 12 volts is actually coming out of the RF hub and the TCM is pulling this low when we're in park. By the way, this description is talking. This is a pretty good example of why you don't want to be pulling fuses and things when you're looking for a parasitic drain. Do some other test to leave the vehicle exactly how it is when it's acting up. Because this thing was acting up all the way up until I pulled the plug off the RF hub and then replugged it back up. So I took power away from it, put the power back, it's back asleep. The dash is off, the shifter's not lit up, it's back asleep. So right now, the car's probably fine. Um, I, I'm I was at least able to pinpoint, you know, the RF hub is the module keeping the network awake. So at least I knew whenever I pulled that plug out, that was kind of where I needed to focus. So I'm real confident that's my issue. The bad thing is, is now I'm not acting up again. And when it's not acting up, I can't look at live data on the hub to see what it's fussing about. Uh, if there's like some kind of input going on that's keeping it awake. Um, there's not really a whole lot to it. There's a bunch of antennas 
some door switches, some things like that. So what if it's a door switch that's keeping it awake? Well, I don't know that now because it's, it's not acting up. Um, it'd been nice to have looked at all that before I unplugged it. I think I looked over stuff, I think, before I unplugged it. I'll have to go back over the video footage and see if I recorded doing that or not because I honestly can't remember if I did it while the the power was turned off like the key was turned off and it was awake talking so I've I've got enough for me to make the call it may be the wrong call but at some point you've got to make a call and either is you spend more time with it or you replace the part you're pretty confident about now one thing about replacing this part to kind of help make that call is i can take this this module out pull the circuit board out and just see if it's been wet or something so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to pull it out we'll inspect the circuit board make sure there's nothing weird going on with it because in data there is that weird uh that weird uh, TRS signal, the transmission range signal, thinking it never sees park. And when it's in neutral, it goes to NA. So there is something wrong with that. I don't know what it is yet, but there's something wrong with that. So let me get it apart and see uh, if I can figure something out with it. This is kind of what I was afraid of. The board is clean. There's nothing at all that I see out of the ordinary that makes it much harder to make a call on this thing if this thing had just a little bit of corrosion in it somewhere that would be a very easy call but huh nothing at all I think the only thing I can do is do a little more research on this range switch thing and just see if somewhere else I've got this this range switch issue. <clears throat> I mean this has got to be getting it over data. I'm pretty positive of that. So if it's getting that data, surely something else has that data. So I'm in the BCM data now, and it has a Prindle status also, and it says park when we're in park. So if we go to reverse, it says reverse, neutral, and drive. So BCM sees the correct data. This is a time where I'm almost wondering if this is a scan tool issue with the RF hub or if the RF hub is actually thinking it's in reverse when it's in park if it is that's a good sign that that thing is corrupted somehow well it's been a couple days I put a uh, RF hub in this thing and I've been just letting it kind of sit outside crank it every day but it's been probably three days now without being touched and it started right up. Um, sorry, I was in a hurry when I got the RF hub. I didn't have time to film it because I, I had to had things to do. I didn't have time to film. But I got an RF hub brand new from uh, the Dodge dealer, put it in the hat rack, programmed it to the car and it has not died once since then. So I'm calling this a fix <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't come back and bite me later. If it does, if this car comes back with a battery drain, we'll film it. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you guys later.